Hey guys, this is Ryan from rm-sounds.com, and I want to start by wishing you all a belated Merry Christmas. Hopefully you're all off spending time with friends and family, and maybe finding some time in between to work on some music. I know I have been, and I have got a new video for you. In this video, I want to talk about some sidechain compression techniques I've been working on. I'm sure all of you are aware that Ableton supports sidechain compression, sidechain on its auto filter and gate effects, and hopefully I'm not missing any others. Um, but my issue was how do I group a whole bunch of tracks together and have them all pumped by the kick drum, for example, which is very common in a lot of electronic dance music. Um, my, my first initial idea was to use a group track. It's very simple. Group all your tracks that you want pumped into one track, stick the compressor on that track, and sidechain it to your kick track. The problem with this is that limits you later on when you want to use more group tracks. Um, because I, you either can't do it or you have to find a hack to y use nested groups within groups. I can't remember exactly, but either way I found a better way to do it, and that's using Ableton's return tracks. I don't really use return tracks a whole ton because of groups, but uh, finally I'm starting to see their use. Um, so the way that I set this up um, is it's quite simple, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to select my very first track on the left, hold down shift, and select the last track on the right. That'll select all of your tracks. And then if you don't have your in-out routing um, pane open, there's a little button down here on the right that'll bring that up. And then down here in the Audio 2 section, select it on any track, it doesn't matter, it'll apply it to all of them because they're all highlighted, but select Sends Only. So now what you've done is you've routed all of your tracks into your return tracks, um, but you haven't actually dialed them in yet, so if I were to hit play, you wouldn't hear anything at all yet. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert two return tracks for this to work. You need a minimum of two, but you could do more if you wanted. So I'm going to insert one, and I'm going to rename that to Sidechain. And then I'm going to insert a second one, and I'm going to rename that to, sorry, I'm going to rename that to Compressed. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to select all of these tracks once again. And I'm going to exclude this one drum track that I've got right here. And I'm going to dial them all into Return C. And then all of these tracks, they're going to be the ones that are going to be pushed down by my drum track, which I'm going to select individually and route that to return B. So now basically what I've done is I've, rather than having all my tracks going into the master track and playing out of my sound card, I've routed them, bef I've routed them into these return tracks, which are then going into the master track later on. I'm also going to enable this uh, send on return A because I think I've got a reverb on there that I would also like to be compressed. And I'm going to send that into C as well, which is our compression track. So currently, I've put no effects on either return track, so it should sound identical to the way I had it before I set this up. And I'll just play you a little clip of what that sounds like. This is a track I've been working on, um, and honestly, it doesn't really need that pumping effect that I'm talking about, but it's got a warm, full sound to it that'll lend itself nicely to this example. I've taken out my nice acoustic drums that fit well with the song, and I've programmed in just a horrible um, four-on-the-floor style kick and snare just for this example, but this has nothing to do with the track, so forgive me for uh, it sounding so bad. But anyway, this is what we're going to hear unaltered. Um, I'll just start it from here.
So it already sounds pretty good for a work in progress. Um, and what the sidechain compression is going to do is just give a little more punch to the drums, a little more clarity in the low end. Um, and like I said, in, in a heavy dance track or a heavy electronic track, this would be much more effective. Um, and we're going to go overkill right now, but it's just an example. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our device list and we're going to grab the compressor and drag it onto the C return track, the compress compressed track. To bring up sidechain, you click on this little arrow right here and you click the sidechain button. And under audio from, we're going to select return B. And again, that is our kick drum track which is, or kick and snare track, I should say, which is going to drive this compressor and apply the effect of that, that amplitude level to the rest of the tracks in this project. So if I solo the B sidechain track and we look at the C return compressor, you'll see the level in the threshold and also the output will line up with the hits in the drum pattern. And now, if I solo the C compression track, as I begin to dial down the threshold and dial up the ratio, you'll start to hear that pumping. And I'm going to go totally extreme with it just to show you, and then we can tweak it to taste later on. time the drums would be hitting it's ducking down underneath so from here all you have to do is just bring the drum track back in and mix it to taste maybe play around with your attack and release settings a little bit to get the right um, timing in the pump it can actually be used very musically to add sort of a swing to your project um, and I'm gonna get it pretty subtle for this track but then I'll a B it and you will hear a difference so here we go. So that's a little bit better, not not so blatantly obvious, but now, keep an eye on this device on and off button. I'll use my APC40 so the mouse isn't in the way. But as I turn it off and on, listen for the difference in specifically the kick drum, but you might hear it in the snare a little bit more or a little bit as well. Um, and listen to the difference. Listen to punchiness and the spectrum, the EQ, or like the low end energy that you hear. And it will change a little bit. And keep in mind that the volume of the drum track isn't being altered at all. It's just basically carving out that special space for the drums in the mix. So here we go. So you can definitely hear the difference, um, and it's a very effective technique, especially in heavier, uh, you know, dubstep style tracks and heavier electronic tracks, um, where you really do want to push it pretty hard. It's nice to be able to get stuff out of the way rather than you know riding your EQs too hard, riding your compressors too hard, and oversaturating everything because trying to get that loudness in your mix often will. Um, degrade the quality of your audio and so sometimes the solution is just you know for that very brief fraction of a second get stuff out of the way so your your initial transients on your drums can punch hopefully this has been helpful and thank you for watching and again I'm Ryan from RM-Sounds and I will see you later